Hello everyone, this is your host Risha Akela and I welcome you back to another great topic in a great weather in our program Life Musings by Dr. Padmachan Adhikawa. Today's topic is discussion for grit and ikigai. It will take a deep dive into navigating personal growth and development. We will identify and unpack the psychology behind becoming your best self while leading a fulfilling purpose-driven life. Also, if you are someone who wants to live more on purpose, have more meaning, and generally feel more alive, listen into this episode. So let's start with the question, what is grit? Nice location, nice mm -hmm. day. Yes. Huh? And a nice topic too. Correct. You know, uh, it's, it's all going to sit together very well. You know, grit is a new concept which was put forth by Angela Duckworth. What she says is grit is a characteristic feature which is seen in most of us or some of us, which is like our perseverance and passion towards our long-term goals, okay? So it, grit is like a personality trait. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us have it, some of us don't have it. Yeah. Nice. So what are the different components of grit then? Grit, uh, you know, as they say, it's a new concept again, and mm -hmm. it is something which is co combining of fewer characteristics. Um, mainly, it is like courage, one. You know, uh, when we observe people who are successful, you know, we know that they might be very intelligent, you know, they might be having high, high IQs, mm -hmm. but also they might be hardworking. In spite of all that, these very successful people have this quality called grit. Mm -hmm. And when we look at them, uh, the the other special qualities which are com comprising of this grit are courage, which is like they're not scared of failures. In, in spite of, you know, facing failures or, you know, blockades or, uh, you know, breaks in their careers or in their life, they uh, come back and they come back with force. They stick to their goals. They, so courage is one. And then they're very passionate. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a purpose and that purpose is full of passion and they persevere. They, they hold on to that. They practice, practice, practice until they get it. And you have to understand that people who are, you know, um, having this grit mm -hmm. are not perfectionists. You know, they're excellent in what they do and they're very, um, you know, perseverant in what they do, but they don't strive for, um, you know, perfection because people who are perfect or who are striving for perfection face anxiety you know, sometimes uh, they are worried about fear, I mean, failure. Mm -hmm. So, but people with grit are, are not striving for perfection, mm -hmm. but they strive for excellence in whatever they do. And most importantly, uh, people with uh, grit are very optimistic. You know, they do a self-talk of uh, optimism and they believe and, and achieve whatever they are, uh, you know, they want to achieve so they work on this concept that conceive believe achieve mm -hmm. so they conceive their goals they believe that they can achieve and they will go on achieving it. and here people with grit have these purposes which are going to be useful for the society mm -hmm. they believe that their purpose is going to be useful to society mm -hmm. and they believe that they can achieve it so these are some of the traits which you uh, see in people with grit uh, which are like as i said courage, mm -hmm. um, lack of fear of failure, and, uh, you know, um, passionate mm -hmm. perseverance, and um, optimism, yeah. you know, and they practice, they mm -hmm. practice, practice till they get it, you know, so these are some of the uh, 
components of brain. Mm-hmm. So how can we make our schools pretty then? This is a good question, right? You yeah. know, here we are seeing our younger generation, which are um, not used to failure. You know, they don't like right. failure. And we are cultivating that behavior. Mm-hmm. You know, we um, try to protect our youngsters. We pr- try to protect them from failures. You know, we want to give them uh, so many comforts or we want to make it so easy for them that right. they, you know, we don't want to see them struggle. Right. So that is one reason that they're not trying to uh, take any chances, challenges, challenges yeah. and chances. So here, what we need to tell them is you have to show the courage. You have to lose the fear of failure. It, mm-hmm. it is okay to fail sometimes. So they have to keep trying and they have to practice, practice, practice till they get it. And again, they have to understand that, you know, you have to um, tell yourself that you can do it. You know, optimistic, positive talk will take you long, you know, and most importantly, they should have role models. Mm-hmm. And who are the role models? Parents. So if parents show grit in their behavior, the children are going to learn uh, grit in their yeah. So it's very important that at home we show this guilty behavior and try to uh, show them some role models mm-hmm. who had this guilty behavior. That's a great suggestion. Yes. Yeah. So how to develop grit after you have been raised with sense of you know guilt and psychological insecurities? Role models will mm-hmm. help you and positive talk and having you know somebody to bounce off your ideas and creating a positive environment. Mm-hmm. It's always very important to have a positive influence around you. You know, don't uh, have any negative influences. People are always trying to pull you down. So try to keep them away. Try to keep the negative influences away. Always, you know, cultivate positive environment. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a positive self-talk that you can do, you can achieve. So that will take you a long way. That comes with practice. That comes with practice, you know. And also we have to understand that it's okay. Every day is not a bad day, right? You know, you have to keep doing it. Uh, your purpose and your goal should be in sync with your skill set. So how are you going to know that? Mm-hmm. You know, have mentors, you know, listen to people around you, right. you know, so that will help you. And always choose a purpose and goals which are going to be, you know, um, making you feel good about it. You know, like you should always think about the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Do good to feel good. Right. So that will like help you feel happy, contented, and uh, raise from the yeah. from your and failures. You have said that several times actually. Right. So it all yeah. comes to you know do good, do, do good. good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know you should because as I said, you know many times before, it, the volunteerism is one thing which will make you feel that. Right. You know? So yeah. uh, because there you're not having any expectations. Right. Mm-hmm. When you don't have any expectations, you are going to feel good. You know, your your measure, your uh, um, whatever you do is not measured against anything. Right. Yes. And, yeah. and there's a sense of satisfaction. That's a sense of satisfaction. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So let's let's go to ikigai right. method. Right. What is the ikigai method, and what's your advice on finding ikigai? Ikigai. Yeah, this is a new concept. You know, ikigai yeah. is a new concept which uh, you know I. Uh, you know, you probably might, might have heard it in, in many times, in, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, there is a scientist, again, a researcher, a uh, psychologist, Butner is mm-hmm. his name. Uh, so what he says is, you know, all of us should have this guy. And he went around the world looking around people who have lived long, uh, successful lives. And when he observed, you know, what is making them live happy, long lives, Mm -hmm. what he found was these people had a purpose in their lives, Mm -hmm. you know, apart from having a purpose Mm -hmm. or that ikigai, Mm -hmm. which drives them to lead happy lives, these people were, you know, having long lasting friendships, Mm -hmm. you know, they were uh, still friends with their childhood friends, uh, and then they uh, lived with their families, maintained family connections, and most importantly, they were eating uh, plant-based, you know, diets, which are, um, you know, high in protein. And uh, they were spending a lot of time uh, in nature, you know, taking nature walks. Uh, and, uh, uh, and also they were, uh, you know, having some uh, spiritual base to their uh, life. You see, most importantly, spiritual, when I say people like, oh, I'm not religious. You know, when we say uh, spiritual, it is like you don't have to go to your, temp- right. you know, place of worship. Right. Your temple or church or mosque. 
you know it could be you know how you volunteer again you know how you give back to the society, society. you know mm-hmm. all these things they have observed that is enhancing their life you know making them live longer you know they are founding that they don't fall as uh, sick as often mm-hmm. you know uh, leading healthy lives and many of these people in living in this blue zones as he mm-hmm. calls are are still having a purpose and are holding their jobs and they were like in their 80s and their 90s right so when we look back you know we have to understand that you know being attached or being close to nature mm-hmm. you know being close to your people mm-hmm. being connected to your family because when you're connected to your family and friends you know during times of stress your body releases something called oxytocin right. you know oxytocin is a hormone which makes you fight stress you know it is a hormone which is going to be acting against stress mm-hmm. it's also called as a cuddle hormone you know see when when you are very upset when a lot of uh, changes are happening in your life when you want to talk to somebody you just um talk to your friend on the phone you know you're not going to find a solution overnight but right. then when you talk to your friend you're going to feel good right. you know why you're feeling good mm-hmm. because you generated oxytocin by just chatting with your friend mm-hmm. so that is the power of oxytocin the feel good hormone right, right? so all these things put together you know um leading a balanced life in many ways in every way both in terms of in what types of food you are eating right. and psychologically spiritually will extend will add years to your life right. and, and life to your years right you know? the yeah. quality of life. quality of life you know right. that's more important right? right it's not like yeah it's not like what you're doing it is how you're doing it right. that is what is important this yeah. is what i tell everybody you know people say i'm doing this i'm doing that but are you happy while you're doing it you know it doesn't matter what you're doing or how much money you're earning you know or what ivy league schools you have gone to mm-hmm. all that doesn't matter when you're not happy you're going to be happy when you work for your ikigai so i would encourage all of you to find that ikigai and how do we find that ikigai you know look at your own skills mm-hmm. you know look at what what makes you happy you know something might make you happy sirisha right. while something different might make you right. happy you know mm-hmm. you know uh, even for siblings born to the same mom and dad you know you might have different ikki guys right. or because different things make each of us happy, happy. right correct right. so yeah correct so so can you have more than one ikki guy then yes yes it, depending upon your uh, priorities mm-hmm. right you know how much are you going to have time to um devote to that mm-hmm. yes you can have but then obviously when you have too many things one thing is going to be your right. major priority right you know so um i would i would say that yes you know make one thing a priority and give you a, your best to it mm-hmm. you know focus on that yeah. yeah so let's let's try to find the relationship between grit and ikigai yes so i tell people like you know many of us ask like last few years like last two years you know all of us have gone through so many changes because of covid you know we have not been able to go out to work we have been restricted in closed spaces mm-hmm. we have been um, we learned so many ways mm-hmm. there are some certain um, uh, negatives of course many negatives because of covid we lost so many loved ones you know we had to sacrifice so many things but mm-hmm. we also learned something positive you know it's hard to believe right. but we did learn a lot of positive things one thing is to prioritize right. you know to understand what is important to us and to focus on that right, right? Mm-hmm. we learn to um, remove all those relationships which are not going to be useful which are not going to be beneficial for us in a long run mm-hmm. so we learn again to uh, minimize right things. so right. minimize things and increase that which makes us happy right. you know, so we learn to prioritize as i said mm-hmm. so that has you know happened in last two years and people who have grit will come out in their uh, in from these uh, uh, testing times you know if you have seen people who are surviving who have faced a lot of problems are still doing good because they have an inherent quality mm-hmm. called grit you know this grit is seen in many successful people like scientists like einstein you know um uh, you know uh, bill gates and many athletes too who despite all odds they do well you know they face success you know serena williams and venus williams mm-hmm. you know you when you see their stories 
they have fought so much to be where they are so coming from you know like covid ridden last two years if we practice ikigai we will be ready to face any problems like this in near future so that is how i would want to tie these two um, traits of grit and ikigai if we encourage grit in in our children in our youngsters and in ourselves mm -hmm. and cultivate an ikigai find that purpose to live for we are going to be a grand success in the in the bigger scheme of things mm -hmm. right yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. amazing advice yes <laughs> yeah and and i think today the environment is also uh, you know helping us realize the importance of uh, right yeah the small things right? small things yeah. small things add to our uh, happiness right right yeah right. Aren't there any other ways that you can one can start with, uh, you know, um, achieving ikigai? You know, choose your purpose. As I said, like you know, for example, if if you ask about myself, you know, let's take my own example. Mm -hmm. So, what is my ikigai right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, my ikigai right now is uh, I profess because I'm a professor. Yeah. You know, I teach. I want to uh, touch as many people as possible through my teaching right. you know so that's the best i can do mm -hmm. you know and and the satisfaction which i get by sharing my knowledge sharing my experience is inexplainable right. you know i might i may not be uh, you know saving lives but right. i am helping people learn certain skills which mm -hmm. will make them save lives right. right right so or maybe i will help them save their own lives right you know right. so and again i should not be thinking about how important my task is going to be mm -hmm. or how uh, important i am going to be or how influential i am going to be mm -hmm. i should not be thinking about the profit or the benefit that is going to happen to me right. but i have to think about what is how is it going to help others so similarly you know let's take about you your ikigai right now is bringing up your kids you know helping them find their paths right so you are there you are helping them you know uh, find their own uh, place in the world you know that is your ikigai right so uh, for everybody you know uh, your ikigai is going to be different at different stages of life right so so uh, but the importance is all of us should have these goals mm -hmm. should have a purpose, purpose a yeah. purpose which will touch many people mm -hmm. beyond yourself you know maybe other than um, uh, your job and your um, you know children you yeah. probably can volunteer mm -hmm. you know you probably are you know so that i would say a volunteer in a place which will make you happy which will you know show your skill set or contribute your skills to the society right? you know right. so uh, that way in small ways uh, we can have our own ikigai guys awesome. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so like uh, for example you know you might ask me what is the ikigai of you, of a grandparent mm -hmm. you know the grandparents they're sharing the happiness yeah. you know they're sharing their stories their you know experience. experiences yeah. you know and uh, staying happy and staying positive so that their grandchildren can learn right. from them is right. their ikigai mm -hmm. right instead of being depressed or being upset or you know um, so being positive is also and helping having a smile on your face um, being there for somebody uh, yeah so that is Awesome. Yeah. Thank I you. Love Thank today's you. episode. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a bigger picture, right? We, yeah. we slowly progress from so many different um, concepts. Mm -hmm. And um, and this Ikigai really gets to right. me, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a newer concept. I really was excited when I heard about yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really like this because it, it just sits very well with Correct. how we are all uh, progressing in the world mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. You know, and I think I, I also saw your article. Oh, uh, that came in. That, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you know, the the question um, the editor asked me when I was writing this article for uh, American Telugu Association magazine was, uh, she asked me, how can somebody deal with uh, a situation like COVID mm -hmm. if it happens again? So I thought about it. Like, question. yeah, very good right? question, right? Mm -hmm. You know. So I thought about it. How do I present this, or how do I tackle this question? Then I thought, like, you know, people who have survived um, the COVID situation showed a lot of grit, showed a lot of inner strength, mm -hmm. dug inside, you know, um, faced those uh, fears of losing people or faced the, faced the actual reality yeah. of losing people, 
and they came out of this mm -hmm. and still they are moving along in their lives yeah. that is because of the grid you know mm -hmm. and how do we move along now after the survival it is having an ikigai having a purpose mm -hmm. you know um, and as i said covid has taught us that right you know the positive uh, pro of covid is you know to learn to prioritize to have a purpose to have a deep meaning to our life and just uh, slow down and take one step at a time. Take slow down, <laughs> take one step at a time, you know, make yourselves happy so mm -hmm. you can um, make others happy in your life. Great. You know, so yeah. I would advise everybody, find your ikigai. <laughs> <laughs> great, yeah. great. So in the end, uh, only you can take the action, right? Uh, necessary to pursue your ikigai. And once you have gotten really great at something, you can teach others to do it you'll get back much more than you give. Thank you for the content, Padma Jagar. You're most welcome, <laughs> Sirisha. I really enjoyed presenting this today. Yeah, thank you. So mm -hmm. we'll meet again with another interesting topic like this in our next episode, as usual. And thank you all for joining and supporting us all the way. Watch us live on Mana TV International with Yap TV. And for repeat telecast, subscribe to Mana TV on YouTube and also like our Facebook page to stay connected. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay smiling. Goodbye.